Okay, so you can see what this can start to do for agriculture. It becomes de facto organic. It reduces fertilizer, pesticides. It starts to make farmers um, energy self-sufficient. And you gotta wonder why they grow corn at all right now. This is such an amazing thing that I'm gonna do a little segue into it. And you can see why it's such a fragile system that we should be able to bust this down. Basically, Meat sells for 60 cents a pound wholesale, roughly, in most, most times. It's, a little, it's up a little bit right now because the market was so bad that people killed so many of their cattle. Now there's a slight shortage of meat, so it's, it's a little higher. But 60 cents a pound is what a farmer typically gets for feedlot beef. Now, there's 450,000 feedlots in the United States. Feedlots are small amounts of land where you bring the corn in and the cattle eat it, and they fatten up on it. Now, uh, I'll talk about why that's stupid in a minute, but let's talk about the economics. Basically, since it takes, and some of you may know this, how many pounds of corn does it take to make one pound of beef? 10 pounds. So if you're gonna make corn, or if you're gonna make beef for 60 cents, and you wanna make a profit, how cheap does the corn have to be? takes 10, 10 pounds to make that 60 cents worth of meat. Less than 11, 5 cents a pound. About 5 cents a pound. 5 cents a pound. That's cheaper, it's cheaper to burn corn at that price in a stove than it is to burn firewood. Okay? What's that? Or eat the corn directly. Heaven forbid eat the corn directly. People don't do that. 70% of our corn is fed to cattle in the United States. 20% of the corn is fed to rich European cattle. Only 10% of it goes to other uses. Of that, 7% is alcohol, both whiskey and fuel. Then there's high fructose corn sweetener. And you're down to 1% or less is actually fed to people. And I don't think corn chips really qualify too much as food. Now, those of you who aren't vegetarians are going to say, now wait a minute, Dave. This is getting into the food versus fuel issue because meat is food. Well, you might have a point there. Being a vegetarian myself, I don't necessarily agree. But, but at any rate, you know, meat is food, so we've got to count that. So isn't it unethical, and this was back in that question earlier, to use our land and our soil to make fuel versus you know, making food for the starving hordes of India. Well, as we already found out, the starving hordes don't get any of this corn. But let's say we're talking about feeding our cattle with this corn. Well, it turns out that cattle, you know, in permaculture, we always go back to where was it in nature before we messed with it. So does anybody know where cattle evolved from? The, geo, you know, the, ec, the um, ecological center of where cattle came from? They, they started somewhere on the planet. So where was it? Close, Southern Europe and Northern Africa. <coughs> Northern Africa used to be a forest. What is it now? Desert. It's the Sahara Desert. That's a desert human caused by overgrazing. Okay, now, I'm not gonna get into that whole story, that's for the permaculture course. But let me talk about cattle and what they eat and what they're evolved to eat and why what we're doing with corn is insane. Cattle have four stomachs. We don't, right? So why do the cattle have four stomachs? They can process. process what? Yeah. Cellulose. Cellulose, brush, woody stuff. Cattle are evolved, and if you look at their feet, they're not, they're not uh, buffalo, right? What does a buffalo foot look like? What do goat's feet look like? Cloven hoof. Therefore, prairie living, traction on the prairie. Cattle have these big flat feet, right? What's that good for? Soft forest soil. Gives you more surface area for spongy soil. So you don't need traction. So cattle are evolved to live in forests eating brush. That's how they get their energy. So they've got an incredible array of organisms that live in their gut, bacteria that put out cellulase or enzymes that break down cellulose. And what does the cellulose break down into? 
sugar, which they then are able to digest for energy, and that's what makes them live. So we come along and we feed a grass product to them. But these are forest animals. Corn is a grass. It's a big grass, but it's a grass. And when you feed grain to cattle, they don't have the enzymes to break down starch. So when you feed corn to cattle, 80% of the starch goes through undigested. So that's why in the Midwest, they take cow poop from feedlots and feed it to the pigs because there's so much food value left in it. So we are throwing the starch away in the way we do agriculture now. If we're considering, you know, cattle agriculture food, we're throwing away 80% of the energy or the starch. And of course that causes tremendous problems in the feedlots because it's great um, food for bacteria and all the stuff that they wade through in the, the feedlots. But we're throwing away 80% of the starch. Now, this is really interesting because alcohol is a real big issue that can solve some of this, even if we're talking about keeping cattle agriculture for a while. If you take the corn and you first ferment it to make the alcohol, the starch is removed. What is left over, as I said, is the dried distiller's grains, and it's about one-third the weight of the original corn because the rest of it was starch and it disappeared. Now the cattle, when they eat the dried distiller's grains, don't have to fight with all the starch in their system, which makes them very ill, by the way. There's bloating problems and everything else when you feed them too much grain. So a very interesting thing happens. When you feed the one-third amount of dried distiller's grains in, in comparison to the 100% corn that you would have fed them otherwise, they gain 17% more weight and they do it 13% faster and they have less than half the vet bills. So this turns the paradigm on its head. The dry distiller's grains are not a byproduct of alcohol production. Alcohol is a byproduct of making superior animal feed. You think McDonald's would be after them to do that? They could get their meat faster. Well, but also think about some of the implications. That's getting close to 20%, right? So that's talking about freeing up for the same amount of meat production, freeing up 20% of the land of the United States. You know, you, you would need that much less land to feed the same number of cows. That's a huge number, really. So with dairy cattle, it's even more dramatic. Dairy cattle get uh, up to 40% more milk when they feed dried distiller's grains versus normal corn because there's a huge amount of waste, wasted energy, biological energy that cattle go through trying to make milk from, from starch. So why aren't the farmers doing this now? Is there oh, they are. Not enough of the, of the PDG to offer that? Oh, it's a standard commodity. It's right on the stock market every day. They trade in it. I mean, it's, it's a huge product. This is, this is done right now. What I'm trying to say is wouldn't it be illegal or shouldn't it be illegal to ship this 20% grain overseas as corn when they're just going to feed it to their cattle? We should say, no, we're not going to let you go waste the starch. We're going to save that for our fuel and we'll give you a better animal feed for it, which only takes one third the energy to ship it to you because we've kept the starch here. There's a lot of implications in this. So this is a direction that sounds like it's actually happening oh, yeah. on some level oh, yeah. and will probably because it makes economic sense, it's going to probably evolve whether or not there is alcohol production. Uh, things that make sense don't always happen with the USDA. You know, there's only one employee in all 64,000 USDA employees that deals with organic. So sense is really not what we're talking about here. Why do we, and by the way, if you're going to grass like they do out here, Neiman Shell, other places, grass-fed beef is produced for 15 cents a pound. So it's even more economical to range feed beef. It would be more economical to run the cattle in the cornfield and let them eat the plants in place. What you need to understand is that different people make the money. If you're a corporation, you don't have to own hundreds of thousands of acres. You just have to own the feedlot. You get the farmers to grow the grain for you, ship it to your feedlot, you pump it through the cattle, and then you sell the meat. 
Now, if we were to do things in a way that made ecological sense for raising meat, in other words, let the cattle rotationally graze crops that are cellulosic, the people who would be making the money are the landowners, which are 675,000 farmers in the United States and not a handful of corporations. Four corporations control 80% of the beef in the United States.